How's it going everyone? We're less than a couple of weeks away from the release of Cyberpunk 2077. It seems like everything is in place for an official release on December 10th, for sure this time around. So I thought it'd be a great idea to familiarize those of you that may not be very familiar with the person behind this game, as in the person who provided the concept and mythos of Cyberpunk 2077 for CD Projekt Red to base their game off of. The man behind all of this is none other than Mr. Michael Pondsmith. Mike Pondsmith is an American role-playing board and video game designer best known for his work for Telsorian Games, where he developed a majority of the company's RPG lines since the company's founding in 1982. Tulsorian Games is a Washington-based role-playing game publisher, founded in 1985 in California by Mike Pondsmith. It was one of the first RPG publishers to embrace desktop publishing. Currently, Mike Pondsmith is the owner, CEO, and lead designer. Pondsmith is credited as an author of several RPGs, including Mechton, Castle Falkenstein, and of course, Cyberpunk. Mike Pondsmith has an impressive long list of works, awards, and achievements that a short video like this wouldn't be able to do him justice. This video will focus on Pondsmith history within the context of Cyberpunk instead. So without further ado, let's get right into it. In 1988, Tulsorian Games released Mike Pondsmith's Cyberpunk, the role-playing game of the dark future set in the year 2013. Several expansions by Pondsmith and other authors followed and Pondsmith released Cyberpunk 2020, a handbook with an updated story arc and mechanics, although existing expansions remained compatible with the new game in 1990. Pondsmith designed Cyberpunk 2013 as the second game to use the interlock system. Pondsmith attributes the creation of Cyberpunk to his interest in the genre sparked primarily by Ridley Scott's Blade Runner released in 1982. The motivation behind the Cyberpunk role-playing game was his desire to recreate the technology and dark film noir style of the movie. Cyberpunk is the most expansive line of products in the RTG library with 44 source books containing over 4,700 pages. The game has had an estimated 5 million players to date. In 1993, again under the RTG banner, Pondsmith released an alternate timeline for the Cyberpunk line. The sourcebook titled Cyber Generation was further enhanced by additional expansions and a second edition was released in 1995 that built further upon already existing explored themes. In 1996, Wizards of the Coast licensed Cyberpunk for their collectible card game Netrunner, designed by Richard Garfield. Netrunner featured locations, entities, and characters familiar to Cyberpunk 2020 players. The game was named one of the millennium's most underrated games in 1999 in Pyramid Magazine, published by the Steve Jackson Games. Mike Pondsmith is featured in the game's credits in the Special Thanks section and makes a cameo appearance as Omni Kismet, PhD, a character's name in an anagram of his. On May 10th, 2012, Fantasy Flight Games announced that they would be releasing Android Netrunner, a new card game based on Netrunner under the license from Wizards of the Coast. Another short-lived card game based on Pondsmith's IP was Cyberpunk CCG, designed by Peter Wax and published by Social Games in 2003. In 1989, West End Games released a cyberpunk and paranoia crossover. The game called Alice Through the Mirror Shades was designed by Edward Bohm and is compatible with both cyberpunk and paranoia games. At least two fan magazines were created around the time of cyberpunk's peak popularity with Pondsmith's approval, Interface Magazine, which evolved from the unofficial cyberpunk update run by Chris Hockabout and UK published Punk 21. The late 1990s have been difficult for the role-playing game industry, and on February 15, 1998, Pondsmith announced that he was turning Telsorian Games into a part-time operation, putting his major lines on hiatus. In the year 2000, Pondsmith announced that he was working on the third edition of Cyberpunk. The work itself started even earlier, right after the release of the Dragon Ball Z adventure game in 1999 and the third edition of Cyberpunk was expected to ship soon afterwards. Initially called Cyberpunk 203X, 
The game was scheduled for a release in the spring of 2001. During the prolonged development of the game, Pondsmith released another preview of the third edition of Cyberpunk on December 31st, 2004. Cyberpunk version 3.0, much like its predecessors, was influenced by the classic cyberpunk books written by Neil Stephenson and William Gibson, but also incorporated ideas from new literacy sources, Japanese animations and movies. According to Pondsmith, it was designed to become a commentary on the 21st century, corporate influences on everyday life, ideologies of groups, the place of government, warfare, and advancements in biotechnology. It's rain-wet streets, it's nights like this with fog rolling in, cars, faceless people going by doing the things that they're doing. There's something kind of hypnotic about it. That's when I get inspired to carry what these streets are like, what the city is like, the mysteries, the stories, the thousands and thousands of people that you pass that are going by as shadows in this wet, cold, dangerous environment. I wanted to grab that. I wanted to take it to the future, and where I took it was Cyberpunk. On May 30th, 2012, it was confirmed that Pondsmith was working with CD Projekt Red on a video game set in the Cyberpunk universe. On October 18, 2012, the game's name and setting were revealed to be Cyberpunk 2077. Immediately afterwards, it was confirmed that Pondsmith was also working on a new edition of Cyberpunk pen and paper RPG game that would evolve the genre. In the interview for GameSpot, CD Projekt Red's Marcin Iwinski divulged that Pondsmith's involvement in the video game development mostly focuses on the game world aspect and mechanics and his input. Though constant, his involvement was not on a daily basis due to the distance between the parties. Video game creators as well as Mike Pondsmith and other RTG designers will contribute on the newly formed cyberpunk.net blog. Now, for CD Projekt Red, coming from their long history of designing for the medieval setting of their Witcher series, making this jump from medieval to hyper-futuristic, bringing Cyberpunk 2077 is an incredibly difficult task, given the complications of the technology behind cybernetics and the supposed future technology. And seeing CDPR bring the massive concept that is Cyberpunk 2077 into life is just simply incredible. No previous cyberpunk form of entertainment, from movies to games, has ever been able to pull off what CDPR and Pondsmith have done with this game. I cannot imagine the amount of work and effort that's been put into this game from CDPR. And for Mike Pondsmith to just have such a creative mental capacity to come up with all of these concepts is very impressive. According to Pondsmith, he gets the inspiration by doing a lot of research reading books and magazines and finding things that would be applicable to the world of cyberpunk. And that includes very large concepts that cover transhumanism, large corporations and their collusion with the government to keep a tight grip on the people, as well as the explanation behind the technology of cybernetics and so on and so forth. It's going to be very interesting and exciting to see how all of that will take place in the world of Cyberpunk 2077 and how it will all connect to present a fulfilling story with memorable characters in the complicated and troubling world of Cyberpunk 2077. I'm going to continue making content for Cyberpunk 2077, so if you'd like to see that kind of content, subscribe and like or comment so that I know how you guys feel about this content. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in Night City.